Glasgow Central Station was opened the 1st of August 1879. The original station comprised of eight platforms. Two years later, platform number nine was added, and then in 1901 to 1906, the west side of the station, the extension was added. The station itself was built by the Glasgow Caledonian Railway, which was an amalgamation of various rail companies. Now, the original station itself was designed and built by a man called Sir Roland Anderson, who also built and designed the hotel. The 1906 extension was built and completed by Donald Matheson, who was the chief engineer for the Caledonian Railway, in conjunction with James Miller, who was the architect and designer. After both of them completed and built the extension in 1906, they went on to build Weems Bay Station and also Glen Eagle Station and Glen Eagle's Hotel. Glen Eagle's Hotel was also owned by the Caledonian Railway. The station itself, when it was built and completed in 1879, cost approximately £2 million. Given today's inflation, you'd probably be looking at £30 to £50 million for the cost of building the station. 14,000 men built the station. Some were Irishmen who had come over, families after the famine of the 1847, and the rest were Scotsmen. These men were known as navigators. The navigators were revered by the ordinary working man, given that a navy could carry out in one day what it would take an ordinary worker to do in four days. And these men were sustained by beer and pies. A lot of people don't realise that when they come into Glasgow Central, how vast this building actually is. The roof itself comprises of 48,000 panes of glass, which make it the biggest glass roof anywhere in the world and is in the Guinness Book of Records for this. Real track actually changed the glass over seven years ago. Now the reason for this was that during the Second World War, British Rail painted the glass black. And the reason for that was when the German bombers come up to bomb the shipbuilding industry on the Clyde, this place stuck out like a sore thumb, given it's 2.3 miles squared. There was no direct hit taken on the railway by the Germans, so you could say British Rail was very effective in the job that they'd done. The problem was for us in the late 80s that given with the amount of steam trains that came into the station, although the steam trains were retired in 1965 to 67, the Glasgow Central was in effect a very dark building to work. Now, rail track at the time carried out the work for the glass to be replaced. The project cost £23.8 million to do and the work came in a year ahead of schedule. The roof itself has particular importance architecturally, given that a roof of this expanse in any other building would have a supporting arm in the centre. But the next time you're on Glasgow Central's concourse, you'll see there is no supporting arm. Now this was an ingenious design. This was one of the earliest examples of the box girder being used. Now the box girder would dissipate the weight to spread the weight to the columns on the left and right hand side. If the girders in the centre of the roof were solid, then they would have sagged many, many years ago. But given that the supporting columns on the left and right hand side are bearing the weight, they're the load bearing columns, then it will never sag. When we look across to the west side of the station and we look at the glass windows, these windows are very cathedral-like in presentation. Donald Matheson, the chief engineer for the Caledonian Railway, decided that this would pay homage to Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Isambard Kingdom Brunel, Britain's, if not the world's greatest ever engineer, when he built and opened Bristol Temple Mead Station in 1854, said that he wanted to build cathedrals to worship the Iron Horse. The cathedrals being the stations and the Iron Horse being the trains. When Matheson completed with James Miller the extension in 1906, this was him paying homage to the great Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and that's why the windows are shaped in this cathedral-like way. If we take a look at the girders that span the length of the roof, all of this steel was manufactured at the Parkhead Forge in Glasgow, 
which is near to Celtic Park. Now, quite a fascinating and humorous story about the forge was that the working conditions for the men in the 1870s was quoted as working in a hell on earth because of the intense heat. Now, these men could only quench their thirst by drinking beer. Now, this caused the inevitable amount of fatalities. Many, many men would die on a weekly basis. Now, a local soft drink supplier approached the management team at the Parkhead Forge and suggested a trial run of his soft drink, which they were quite glad to take on. Now, over three months, he eradicated all the deaths and it was then proposed that they would take the contract on in full. The chap who made the soft drink then approached the owner of the Parkhead Forge and they decided to go ahead with the contract. As he left the room, the director said to him, do you have a name for this? And he said, no, I don't. And he said, well, we manufacture iron and steel, so let's call it Iron Brew, and that man was John Barr. The most important thing to stress is the cultural importance of this building to Glaswegians and Scots in general. This is, a, this is the largest station in Scotland. We service most areas in Scotland to the south. This is a terminating station. Although we have Glasgow Queen Street up the road, they have much less of a passenger footfall than we do. We average 98,000 people a day, which is near 34 million people a year.